Enka, Japanese old people music. Yes, that's me. I'm over here. At least that's what most people describe it as. Heck, even I said the same thing in my previous video. Truth is, Enka is a lot more than just old people music. But before we get into the history of Enka, we need to understand the music itself. Enka's music style is based on the pentonic scale, with similarities to blues. The usual themes of Enka are about love, personal hardships, pushing through difficult times, and even about suicide and death. Now, the typical Enka singer uses melisma, which is a type of singing style where a single syllable of text while moving between several different notes in succession. Well, that's the Wikipedia definition. So what does that actually sound like? So, what does this sound like with Inca? Well, kind of like this. This technique is called kobushi. Once again, according to Wikipedia, kobushi occurs when the pitch of the singer's voice fluctuates irregularly with one scale degree. Now for you music players out there, this is similar to vibrato, but vibrato vibrates in a regular cycle. Now kobushi's style can be heard in other non-Japanese songs as well, such as the Italian song Santa Lucia. Enka is a traditional form of Japanese music, and it embraces it. Female singers usually dress in kimonos, while men either wear formal clothes, such as a suit, or traditional Japanese clothing. The history of Enka involves a lot of politics, and these politics help shape Inca into what it has become today. Although, surprisingly, the political side of Inca isn't as boring as it sounds. It's kind of like a Japanese TV show. Lots and lots of drama. First of all, Inca was a term used for spreading political messages in the form of song and this was run by the Freedom and People's Right Movement during the Meiji period. Basically, this group was an activist group fighting for democracy. All of this resulted in the Meiji Constitution, or Meiji Kenpo. So during the Meiji period, people referred to Enka as Enka. But now, in modern society, when we refer to Meiji period Enka, we say Soshi Enka. There has been a little bit of debate over what the first Inca was, but most people have come down to agree that it was Dynamite Bushi. The reason people use Inca for spreading their political message was because the Meiji government had banned dissident speeches and protests about the new regime. 
So, to combat this ban, citizens sang. One of the more famous writers during this time was Azembo Soeda. Soeda made satire songs about government and society. And another famous Inca singer was Otojiro Kawakami, who was actually known for being an actor and comedian, but had written one of the more notable songs during his time, Opekepebushi. <laughs> Initially, these songs were written without any background musical instruments. But, over time, these songs were printed with song lyrics, and this caught the attention of the government. Fortunately, the movement group and the government were able to make an agreement on some of the demands, but it didn't last long as the activist groups stopped using songs to promote their cause and instead relied on more aggressive tactics, thus ending the political messages found in Inca. Although Inca lost its political importance, it still remained important to Japan. During the Taisho period, Enkashi, or street performer, began to incorporate musical instruments with their songs, such as the violin. Now this is where things start to get a little confusing. During the start of the Showa period, record companies produced Ryukoka, which translates to popular song. This was meant to replace Enkashi. However, today the term Ryukoka is used to refer to popular music from the late 1920s to the early 1960s. But Ryukoka ended up splitting into two groups, Inca and Pop. So, Inca was created from Ryukoka? Well, yes and no. As I mentioned earlier, during the Meiji period, Inca was called Soshi Inca. The Inca that was created from Yukoka was what we know as modern Inca. So essentially, you could see Soshi Inca as a completely different genre of modern Inca. It's a little confusing. Now this also caused a divide with Ryukoka singers who were upset with being categorized as Inca singers. Famous Ryukoka singer Noriko Awaya stated in an interview, Whenever I hear Inca, I have to get away from the music because I feel like vomiting. During this time, there was some divide between the Ryukoka and the Inca singers, but despite their differences, Japan still saw the introduction of some of the most famous Inca singers ever. And what better way to start by introducing Hachiro Kasuga, the first Inca singer. He got his big break by winning a talent contest and was part of the same record label as popular Ryukoka singer Haruo Oka. Kasuga made his debut in 1952 with his single Akai Lampu no Shu It wasn't until 1954, with his release of Otomi-san, that he became a national sensation. A little unfortunate for Haruoka, since he was originally going to sing the song. But you have to admire Kasuga's work ethic. Despite releasing a very successful song, he wasn't satisfied. He recorded a new song called Wakare no Ippon Sugi in 1955, and it was labeled as a true Enka song. Naketa, naketa. Nakes 
次の石の地蔵さんのよう」Yes, true, Kasuga was the first Enka singer, but there was one singer who was more famous. I'm talking about Hibari Misora. I mean, she's gotta be more famous, right? She has a museum completely dedicated to her. <laughs> Now, this woman was amazing. And amazing, man, that's an understatement. Misora started her singing career at the age of 12. But before she was an Enka singer, she was a jazz singer, with her debut song being Kappa Boogie Woogie. And it wasn't until the 60s that she finally entered into the world of Enka, and eventually became known as the Queen of Enka. Other famous Inca singers were Ishikawa Sayuri, Yashino Aki, and Fuji Keiko, whose daughter is one of my favorite singers of all time, Utade Hikari. The 70s and 80s were a great time for Inca singers. Yes, we lost a lot of good singers with the death of Hibari Misora, Masokoga, and Fuji Keiko retiring briefly, but there were still plenty of singers out there filling the void. For example, Sanae Jonochi, who was an idol singer at the time, released an Inca song called Ajisa Bashi, and it actually reached number one on the Orikun charts. So, I have to admit, it's a little weird to have an idol singer reaching number one on the Orikon charts for an Inca song, considering idol singers aren't the greatest singers out there, but hey, the girl had talent. The 90s was not a great time for Inca. In 91, Hachiro Kasuga had passed away, and the younger generation didn't care for Inca. Instead, they flocked toward J pop and Western music. And although Enka was in the decline, that didn't stop Enka singers from trying to penetrate the market. There were some who succeeded, and then there were those who got f a n h o s t But they tried. One of the more popular Enka songs during that time was Keiko Fuji's Keiko no Yume wa Yoru Hikaru, which was regarded to be a dark Enka song. Fortunately, the 2000s was a lot kinder toward Inca. Although it didn't reach the same heights as it did in the 60s and 70s, Inca had increased in popularity with the younger generation. The thing was, it wasn't traditional Inca, it was more of a hybrid with a combination of modern music. For example, 
In 2004, Johnny Entertainment's boy band group Kanjai A debuted with Naniwa Iroha Bushi, which was based on a Japanese folk song called Kowachi Ondo. The only difference was this version had rap. It reached number one on the Oricon charts, and it was the first Inca song to reach number one in 17 years. So now, we need to take a look at what Inca's like today. Inca still has a prevalence in today's Japan. NHK's New Year's Kohaku always features at least one Inca singer. And Inca has even won the hearts of some Americans, specifically one man named Jero. He became the first black Inca singer, so I'm, I'm a little proud of that. But my point being, while traditional Inca isn't as popular as the good old days, it stays alive by adapting with the new generation of music. And honestly, I think that's how music is going to survive, by adapting. Of course, hold on to some of the traditional part, but also sprinkle something new. If you don't, then a music genre will eventually die out. Of course, Japan isn't going to let that happen. In 2016, the government established the Parliamentarian Supporting Inca and Kayo Kyoku Committee. Wow, that is a mouthful. Basically, it's to promote and preserve Inca. I know one thing for sure. I can't wait to see how Inca remains relevant in the future. Alright everybody, thank you for listening to my video on Inca. By the way, Who's your favorite Inca singer? And if you liked the video, please give a like, subscribe, and ring that bell to be notified for future videos. I try to upload every week, so look forward to it. All right, as always, enjoy life, enjoy music, peace.